Let's go. So Joe Milton heard me hating on him last week and said, look, Carter, you know absolutely nothing about football. I'm going to go out the very next week on the back end of a back-to-back road game and lead my team to victory versus a very hungry Kentucky team. He did just that. And basically in the background, you see uh, Kentucky saying, look, we are going to play off of you. So on the very next play, Josh Heupel says, look, if you're going to give us a light box, let's see if we can run against it. And what's very interesting is this is not a light box, if you will. They have pretty much Tennessee outnumbered here. It's a 6v5 look. So scoring on this uh, doesn't look all that advantageous. But Tennessee decides to run a counter um, with just one person pulling, the G coming around. And look at this kickout block, all right? Bang. All right, clears 54 out, and we're getting some good, good, good movement right here on this uh, DT. Look at this double, able to get to the next level, and this is just easy pickings right here. And obviously, we just need this RB to make the safety miss, and we are at pay dirt, and 11, come on, you got to do better than that. He did slow him down enough to make you think Wright would get caught here, but you are wrong. Get it right wrong still a really explosive run uh right here and it's just simple offense right um uh, two guys got blocked by one person even though they had a main advantage in the box and next thing you know tennessee has an explosive run play so we move ahead here i found this field goal to be interesting by kentucky they actually stole a play from tennessee and it did not all right so move ahead here and tennessee just toyed with kentucky in the run game i am very shocked that kentucky uh, getting this this extra week to prepare just was not ready for any of Tennessee's run schemes, right? If you're 13 here, you have got to be playing the quarterback the entire time. This is an easy pull read. And what I love about this from Hypo is, you know, you've been seeing these tackles pull. Well, the safety's like, okay, if the tackle is pulling, they've been kicking our butt on counter. I need to get down in here and help with the running game because I know for certain that the ball is going through here. That's not what's happening. The fact that nobody plays a quarterback at all, it's just lunacy. But this is what happens when you're killing them in the run game, okay? You're able to pull, and look at all these free yards right here. And you see, this is a safety. He still thinks the running back has a ball, and it's just too late, right? Look at all this room for Joe Milton. Now, uh, I called Joe Milton out as a runner last week. Uh, that's a lot better gaining some extra yards right there. And just an overall good play design. I want to celebrate. Is this pass rush move by this DT, okay? So he fakes his head to the inside. You'll see it very briefly here. Um, and watch at the beginning. Bang. Okay, so he's faking like he's going out here. Then he goes through this gap, and then he spins back through the A gap right here. This is really incredible stuff. So he rips... And then he spins to the inside, and he's still able to split through that double. That's a really good stuff right there by zero. The issue, though, is when you have coverage busts on the back end, you can have the best pass rush moves in the world. It just doesn't matter. So the play action fake, um, Joe Milton, even under pressure, he had to get that football over him. When the wide receiver is this open, you're just basically giving up. You know, um, so let's get another angle here. So let's see this from this angle. I mean, this isn't like the most unbelievable bit of route running. 28 just kind of, I know it looks like he's running in mud, right? It, it, I mean, just from the jump, he lost his footing. And even staying with him could have gotten a sack right there. That is just really bad so we get to this third and six and this is just really good quarterback play right this is one of the better throws you're going to see this year so he uh starts off looking off right comes back left and this tight end right here 87 does eventually open himself up but you see i mean this is covered right there's no way that milton could know 87 who they struggled with their chemistry you know last week they missed 87 for a touchdown and Obviously, I missed him on a crucial third down in the second half. So, Milton's rolling out to the right side. And this throw is crazy, okay? Absolutely freaking -lutely crazy. All right, we know about his arm strength, but Keaton, number nine, makes a really uh, 
good effort at this. That's just nuts. All right, so we're behind the sticks here. Tennessee, second and 19. Okay, this is a close game, six-point game. And once again, zero is creating a lot of havoc up the middle. Okay, so now Milton's got to throw across his body, and his feet aren't set to throw this football here uh, to one. Okay, uh, I think that's the transfer, right? And they're trying to get him more involved. And one does a good job seeing that there's space over the middle. Obviously, this is just as covered as you're going to see. And look at this throw by Joe Milton. Sidearm against his body, throwing this receiver open. God bless. That is such high-level quarterback play, right? Um, just truly, truly, truly breathtaking stuff. And he is shutting me up, right? Last week, I was like, Wait, where, where, where's Nico? We got to see some Nico, right? No. I mean, God, that is just a good stuff right here by one, making another guy miss. And, you know, last year, Kentucky had a DB named Carrington Valentine, wearing number 14, really good player. They're missing him, obviously, this year. And you'll see it from this angle, right? Um, once again, a lot of Tennessee, they, they look right and then work immediately back left or vice versa. I mean, just look at this. I mean, I it, it's crazy. And look, he's telling him, go this way. And look at this. It's a flick of the wrist, okay? Now we get to this third and 12. Uh, let's see. I'm tr actually, I'm drawing a blank on this play. Oh, man, yeah. It's, it's there, too. I mean, God, it's amazing what Josh Heupel can do to the boundary, right? He does a really good job creating traffic and just getting guys open to the short side of the field. Once again, 87 is here, all right? And what they do a good job of is creating these little pick, rub kind of traffic situations, right? It doesn't matter if you're a man or zone. It is heck to keep up with this stuff, okay? So, obviously, this receiver takes up two of these guys. So, this receiver is running a vertical, and this tight end is picking right here, delaying, and then eventually leaking out right here. So, Milton looks left. This play is going to the right the entire time, okay? But once again, the middle of Tennessee's offensive line had a rough day, as you guys could see. If Joe had time, he's putting this right here uh, to 87. All right, this is why Kentucky is just a bad football team, right? They're not a well-coached football team. It is third and 11, and a field goal gives you the lead, okay? You want to get as close to the field goal as you possibly can. You don't have the absolute best kicker, okay? If you got Will Reichert, that's one thing, uh, or Chase McGrath from last year, but you don't, right? So Kentucky runs this... Very vertical base play, okay? One of my favorite things to do in this situation is actually run the football, right? If you're running the football right here versus this light box where people are bailing, you might actually get the yards to gain. You might be able to go for it on fourth down, and automatically it will make it an easier field goal. So Leary drops back to pass, and you'll see everything is at the sticks or further. Why do teams continue to do this, okay? Okay. Tennessee's got a good pass rush. They want to pin their ears back. All these deep, low-percentage routes, that's just really bad coaching, okay? And you didn't even give, you know, your best receiver a chance to make a play. Now, I know, Tennessee fans, you and I have had a controversial relationship when it comes to field goal blocks. Is this leaping right here? I mean, that's a 420-pound guy. Uh, not 420. Still, that's a big guy that almost landed on him, and this kick was no good. But still, good job of the Tennessee defense and really bad stuff by the Kentucky offense. All right, here we go. You could make a case that this is a play of Tennessee season right here. Just absolutely incredible stuff because this running back comes from the best state on the planet. That is, of course, the boot, baby. You get a twister defensive tackle, our guy zero again. And he's right here to make this play, okay? This is a 400, I'm doing it again, 300-pound defensive lineman going up against Dylan Sampson. And all you got to do is just hold him up. I mean, this is stuffed. And I have no idea how he got out of that, okay? 
that is ridiculous. Kentucky, um, you know, defensively, when I've watched them, they have looked a little tentative, uh, if I might say, as tacklers. So squirrel, squirrel. I can't say squirrel. Why can't I say squirrel? Play action fake, and this is just good stuff by Joe Milton. Pocket clean as a whistle, and look at this strike, all right? Look at this ball, all right? Squirrel white is open. Could it always be delivered a half second earlier? Yes, but it's right into his hands for a huge game. Okay, so you remember a minute ago, we're talking about Kentucky in the spot. They just ran all vertical stuff, okay? Guess what? Kentucky's playing off like they have been all game. There's a safety all the way back. So pre-snap, it's pretty clear that Kentucky's going to just play back, and then they're going to get exotic. Mississippi State does a lot of this where, you know, the back line of their defense and their linebackers sink all the way back, and they're running a lot of twists, blitzes, and aggressiveness up here. So the weakness of that is right here. And this is just such elite play calling, okay? You see... Tennessee had been doing terrible on third downs in the second half. So what do you do to fix that? Well, if Joe Milton isn't seeing it well on third and long, why don't you, in this spot, just work right here, okay? If something is open vertical, by the grace of God, take it. But that's just not going to work with all their DBs being this far back. So all you have to do is hit this, right? If they're going to get exotic, do twists and all that kind of crap, and they're going to move all their guys back at the sticks, they're giving you that, okay? That is really good stuff by Josh Heupel, and you pick up a huge first down right here, and I know Samson's going to be sick getting shoestrung there, all right? Once again, it's just simple. Uh, this is actually the tackle and the tight end pulling Kind of rare you see that. Normally it's uh, G-Y, but this is uh, T-Y. You're pulling around, and it is just really good stuff. Look at the surge that's being created. I mean, it's just nasty stuff, and look at this hole. Look at that. And Samson is just a really good player. You know, I I did not think that I would see him have this kind of leap. But that was as dominant of a fourth quarter you're going to see from a running back this year. Boom! I'm looking at you. Okay, so if you want to support what we're doing here on Power Hour SEC, feel free to drop a donation. And first thing about this final play to pretty much shield this game is, is this an illegal formation? This offensive lineman clearly off uh, the line of scrimmage. Tennessee with some very tight splits here, something uh, you see them do quite a bit, and now they're just pulling uh, this tackle around, and it's just the same thing, right? Wash these guys to the inside. If this guy over pursues, just wash him out, and you just got to trust Dylan Sampson to find this hole, and he does. I mean, all game long. Tennessee just dominated them over the middle in the run game. Now, like we mentioned in the past game, it was still an issue. Um, but this film study here was mostly to break down Joe freaking Milton, who was sensational. This was his only QBR over 80 versus a Power 5 team this year. Over 80 is uh, uh, freaking amazing, honestly. So give Joe Milton a lot of freaking credit for doing what he was able to do when he, his team honestly really needed him, right? Kentucky had such a great game offensively, and we've done a lot of research as to why Tennessee was at such a significant disadvantage. It's honestly the biggest rest disadvantage in my mind you can have in the SEC. Kentucky having a full bye week to prepare for this and Tennessee being on the back end of a back-to-back -back road game. And if you want to learn more about why that is a big thing, it's in the top right corner of your screen. But obviously Joe Milton doing a good job you know, running the football, sealing the game right there. Huge step in the right direction.